and definitely, positively, no crying! Umgawa, umgawa mana makumba, mana makumba, umgawa mana makumba, which translates loosely into we're couched out in Beverly Hills. Sometimes I hit wrong notes as time goes by. But sometimes it just works so beautifully and life is just a gas. And that happens maybe once in a blue moon. It's just so perfect and life is so sweet. And the moon shines on and on forever. That happens maybe once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Wicked. It's haunting me with this enormous glare. Blue moon shining, enchanted by that midnight sun. Can see us dancing there. I feel like a gypsy. I'm happy and I'm high. Because my heart's filled with desire for this body in the sky. Release me, blue moon, and I'll howl crazy and loud. Embrace me, blue moon, and I'll soar like a cloud, dancing with our bodies close, slowly touching and feeling the warmth to be found. Dancing wild and free, because it's in your arms I want to be. The fire of this midnight sun, the chill of the night and the winds on the run, because its fingers of light are flowing through me as I dance on its waves of tranquility. Are you watching it now too? Do, do you see it staring there? It's calling our names with a fierce glare. It's crying, dance with me, dance with me. And away we will be. Like the wind of the night, we can soar free. Blue moon. And I'm Philip Weinstein. And, and we're, we're couched, couched out, out in Beverly Hills. Hills. We just shared with you our concept of a poetry of words and music. We'd now like to introduce our special guest, actor Bradrick Byrne, who will now express his interpretation of what poetry means in his life. So let's look, watch, and listen to Bradrick. All right. 
Hi, I'm going to do an original piece called Bury the Dead by Erwin Shaw. It's a piece about a young soldier. He's mid-30s, and he's died in the war, and he tries to convince his wife that he's not dead. He has a real passion for life. Sit back and enjoy. Bess, I never talked so that I could get you to understand what I wanted while I was still alive. There are a couple things I ain't had enough of, Bess. Simple things. The things you see when you look out the window after supper, or in the morning when you wake up. Things you smell when you walk outside the door and it's summertime and the hot sun starts to turn the green grass brown. <laughs> things you hear when you're out working with the horses or pitching the hay and you don't notice them, but yet they come back to you. Things like the fuzz of green over a field where you've planted wheat and it begins just to spring up overnight. Things like seeing tall rows of corn blowing in the breeze and the soft into the wind. Something like taking a cool drink of water from a well deep down in the ground after you've boiled in the hot sun all afternoon and then you feel the water just trickle down, cooling you off from the inside out. <laughs> or seeing a small kid playing with his dog on the shady side of a house. Oh, there ain't nothing like that down here, Bess. You see, my place is with you here on Earth. My business is with the top of the Earth, not the underside. You see, it was a trick that yanked me down. I'm not smart, Bess, but I can tell you now, I've got some stories to tell, and I'm gonna tell them, but not until I'm through. Not until I've had my fill of looking and smelling and talking. You see, a man ought to be able to just walk into his grave and not be dragged down into it. I wanna live, Bess. I wanna live. What a beautiful piece that deals Thank with you. both life and death. Could you tell us more about it? Absolutely. Uh, the piece inspired me because in my own personal life, I've dealt with a lot of death recently, and both deaths were untimely. There are deaths that uh, had to do with people dying before their time. They didn't think they were ready to go, and they had great fear in that. And I saw that in the verse. And um, it also ties in with my personal uh, experience and my personal idea of what life is all about. I believe that we come from the spiritual world, we come into the physical world, get a body, learn all our lessons, and we go back to the spiritual world. And uh, that was the best way I could express it and tie it into the show. Well, how do you actually incorporate poetry into your life? I do that several ways. I write poetry, I read a lot of poetry, and what I can express in words, I like to express on a canvas. And actually, I can see that you've brought one here with us today. Right. <laughs> can you tell us more about this? That's my most recent one. I just finished that one this week, actually, and probably the gold leaf is still drying. All my pictures have a title. They all have a certain theme. This one is called Colors from the Sky, and if you look closely, you can see that coming out of the sky. And they express something I'm feeling and something I'm saying at the time. Well, in conclusion, what would you say is your favorite piece of poetry or favorite verse? My favorite verse, which is a, a, a poetry in itself, is God's gift to us is life, and what we do with our life is our gift back to God. And with that, I'd like to say thanks for having me on the show, and God bless to everybody out there. That's nice. All right, I'd like to thank Bradrick for sharing with us today our expression of the poetry of words and music. Oops, we're out of time. Well, then I guess until we see you next time, we're couched, couched out, out in Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills.